The molecules that constitute living organisms, from a single bacterium to the cells of a human body, are a major focus of modern biology. But these biological macromolecules are too small to be observed directly using a microscope. Gaining images of these molecules is, however, important for understanding what they look like, how they function, and how they interact. During this film, we will see the steps that lead to the visualization of a biological macromolecule in three dimensions. This image or three-dimensional structure allows us to appreciate the shape of a molecule and better understand its role inside a living cell. The story begins with the isolation and purification of the molecule. Biological macromolecules, including deoxyribonucleic acid DNA, ribonucleic acid RNA, and proteins are made by a living cell following the precise instructions encoded within its chromosomes. In the case of a protein, for example, the DNA sequence of its gene is copied into a molecule of messenger RNA and then translated into the protein by a cellular nanomachine called the ribosome. The amount of a given molecule found within a cell is often very small. Therefore, to enable us to study a molecule, it is, in general, necessary to manufacture it in a large quantity. To do this, we clone the gene of our protein of interest into bacteria to permit its production or expression in massive quantities. This pair of strands represents a section of the chromosome. The yellow box on the chromosome symbolizes the gene for the protein of interest. An enzyme called DNA polymerase is used to create many identical DNA copies of the gene. The copies are then inserted into a circular bacterial chromosome called a plasmid. The plasmid, now carrying the clone gene, is then itself inserted into bacteria to allow expression of the gene. In doing this, we use the bacteria like microfactories to produce huge amounts of the macromolecule encoded by the gene. Once the gene is cloned into the plasmid, a solution containing the plasmid is mixed with bacterial cells. A series of electrical discharges at high voltage facilitates the penetration of the plasmid, thus carrying the gene into the bacteria. Next, the bacteria are spread over a culture dish and the bacterial colonies that have incorporated the plasmid correctly are identified by their white colour. A bacterial colony containing the correct gene is then grown as a culture. After one night of incubation at 37 degrees centigrade with constant shaking, the cloudy appearance of the culture confirms that the cells have multiplied. The cells are separated from their food and waste products by centrifugation. This pellet of cells is resuspended in a cold, clean solution and the cells are broken by applying ultrasonic pulses, thus releasing the molecules that they contain. Centrifugation at high speed pellets the cellular debris and the liquid or supernatant containing the molecular contents of the cells is recovered for treatment by chromatography. By injecting the supernatant into a chromatography column, the molecules can be sorted as a function of their properties, such as size or electric charge. The separation of the mixture is followed on a screen and the isolated molecules are recovered and fractionated in a series of test tubes. The first step is complete, the protein is pure, let's continue to its crystallization. The crystallization of the molecule of interest is an important and delicate step. 
consists of preparing crystals within which the molecules stacked in a very regular way. To do this, a crystallizing agent is added to the purified molecule to make it unstable and thus provoke its crystallization. A concentrated solution of crystallizing agent, shown here in blue, is placed at the bottoms of the wells in the crystallization plate. Next, drops are prepared by mixing a volume of the solution of molecules with a volume of the crystallizing agent. After hematically sealing the plate, the concentrated solution in the wells absorbs the ambient water vapour to dehydrate and thus concentrate the drop containing the target molecule and the crystallizing agent. This process of concentration makes the target molecule unstable in solution and causes it to crystallise. The crystallization occurs in a few hours or a few days and can be followed using a microscope. Each molecule studied is unique and it is impossible to predict in advance the conditions necessary for its crystallization. Determining the right conditions involves screening many test solutions of very different compositions. The use of a robot allows many more tests to be done by dividing by 10 or 100 the quantity of material needed for each test. The principle always stays the same. Different solutions of crystallizing agents are placed in the wells of the crystallizing plate before adding the solution of molecules to be crystallized. A computer controls the mixtures produced by the robot during the preparation of the drops for crystallization. As well as allowing very small volumes to be manipulated, the robot also accelerates the preparation of drops thus permitting the number reached to be several hundred, if not thousands more, during the initial screen. The step which follows crystallization is analysis of the structure of the crystal using x-rays. Remember that a crystal is a solid, whose molecules are organized in a very regular way. This regularity of stacking is very often at the heart of the geometric appearance of the crystals. It means that the crystals interact with x-rays to produce very intense signals by a process called diffraction. Photographic images of the diffraction are collected and give us information about the shape of the molecule inside the crystal. The preliminary analysis of a crystal can be performed in the lab. The crystal is placed inside a thin tube of quartz, which is in turn placed inside a beam of x-rays. The diffracted signal is collected with the help of a detector. For a more precise analysis, a more intense beam of x-rays is used. This beam is produced by a particle accelerator called a synchrotron. The European synchrotron in Grenoble is one of the biggest and most powerful instruments in the world. Different types of rays, including the very intense X-rays which interest us, are produced by packets of electrons which circulate in the central ring. These rays are collected and used in experimental hutches in different locations around the ring. Here is the control room of one of these areas. The sample is placed inside the hutch between the detector and the arriving X-ray beam. The crystal is pinned under the microscope with the help of a lasso and is then frozen in a stream of gas at very low temperature to minimize the detrimental effects of the radiation. The crystal is positioned in the center of the X-ray beam with the help of a camera. Once the crystal is in the right place, the scientists leave the hutch and close the door. They follow a very strict safety procedure which prevents accidental radiations from occurring.
The experiment itself consists of capturing several hundred images while the crystal is turned in the X-ray beam in order to analyze it from different angles. Here is a series of pictures that have been recorded during the analysis of a crystal of protein making a 180 degree rotation. Each spot on the screen corresponds to a beam of diffracted X-rays. The intensities of the spots that make up these strange constellations are measured by a computer that looks at the whole series of pictures. Combining information about the positions and intensities of these spots allow scientists to calculate an electron density map and then elucidate the positions of atoms within the crystal. This 3D image in blue is an experimental map which shows the electron cloud surrounding the atoms that make up the molecule. The construction of a molecular model is made step by step by interpreting the map and positioning units of amino or nucleic acids. A computer with a 3D display is needed to perform this step. Once the map is interpreted, a complete picture is obtained of the molecule that has been crystallized. It is possible to visualize the whole population of atoms within the molecule or a more schematic representation which reveals a global architecture of the molecule. Here is a protein which is composed of two identical polypeptide chains. The protein is called an enzyme and it catalyzes a chemical reaction. Beyond the architectural aspect, these pictures give us information about the functioning of biological molecules and the ways in which they interact inside the cell. For instance, they can reveal to us how an enzyme recognizes a smaller molecule to bring about a chemical reaction, or how an antibiotic molecule interacts with its cellular target. The type of structural study described in this film is used in fundamental science to understand the functioning of biological macromolecules. But this kind of study is also used in more applied areas to help develop active molecules which lead to the drugs of tomorrow.